Hello and welcome to Dan Turismo. I'm Dan, and today what we're going to be doing is, first of all, I'm going to be taking the Celica uh, to redo a couple of races that I failed last time. Uh, but I've put some upgrades on it. Uh, that Civic I was umming and ahhing about, as you can see, I've sold that uh, for, the, for the extra cash. And the Celica, I've added a few minor upgrades. I've got sports suspension, sports brakes, and stage one weight reduction. Uh, the brakes needed doing because they were terrible. The suspension, I'm hoping it will stiffen up a little bit. And the weight reduction is cheap and you might as well. So, we're going to try and do the Seattle race of the Compact Car Cup because it's a, it'll test the car a little bit more than Rome will. Also because the AI on Rome is a bit annoying with those stupid lunges, which I've had nightmares about ever since. Uh, yeah, so let's just get straight to it. All right, here we go. I haven't bothered going in to adjust any settings yet because I didn't quite see the point. But this should hopefully give me some idea of whether they've improved it or not. Oh, God. The acceleration is still really poor. Nothing I can do about that. Oh, this space down the middle looks like a good place to go. Oh, so much better. It's not diving and rolling all around the place. The brakes work as you'd expect. And this better actually work, because otherwise the whole concept of this playthrough without adding any engine modifications is going to be a real struggle. That was cheeky, but I don't care. Oh yes, look at this. It's the direction change is better, which with digital steering is a blessing out of disguise, but I'll get used to it. I wonder if I can take that flat now in this corner faster than it looks, I remember that from last time. Yeah, I still did it really slowly, makes sense. Right, mistakes pending, I should be okay. This Lancia Y's got a bit of a run. Will they lunge? Of course they will. Oh, everyone is. Everyone taking the least optimal line, and I've almost spun. Right, spoke too soon. Hopefully I can get back to the front. Handling, it's night and day how much better it is. Because those, those, those upgrades cost me. It breaks for about five grand, weight reduction one and a half, and the suspension three and a bit. So, ten grand, just under. The power upgrades I could have done for that would be like a racing muffler and a stage one turbo. I'm not sure that that would have made it any better. Oh, look, I've been too busy nattering about that and I'm still not going to win. Right, but that's that's definitely doable. Right, one more quick go at this one. Well, I failed again by messing up the final corner. What an annoying race. Not doing this one again. Right, well I'm not going to do any more of these because I think the inherent strength of the AI cars is that they can corner very quickly and I need to come back when I've got a car which has better handling to start off with. Now because I've spent the money on this car I, I do want to try and get some of it back so I'm going to attempt this first race of the FR challenge. It may be doable, it may not be. Oh, Clubman Stage Route 5, simple track, know it fairly well. I don't know if having 160 horsepower when the limit is 295 is going to be an issue. Ah, 
something really is a lot better. I wish I'd put these on sooner, if not for to make it able to win more races, but just to make it more fun to drive. Abandoning is so stupid, I would not be keeping up with these cars. This is looking a bit tough as well. I think if I'm not, I think after this I'm going to have to start looking for something else to buy with a bit more get up and go. You know, something in the sort of the mid 200s horsepower range. Still the lead with a cheeky lunge. I don't know if you can hear that, but it sounded very much like the car behind me was either bouncing off the rev limiter, which I've never heard the AI do before at that speed, or constantly braking and slowing down so as not to overtake me. That's very weird. Oh, that was good. I thought I'd clipped the wall on the inside and messed it all up. Oh, so look, we are actually going to win. That's not bad. Oh, I feel less bad about that now. Yay! I think we might even win a car for that as well. Yes, we did win a car for that. The fantastic Sil 80. Oh, yes. First half Nissan Silvia, rear half Nissan 180SX. It's a cut and shut that is approved of. Which I... Hmm. See, I do quite like that, but... I've used that quite a lot before because it's pretty useful. And you think two grand, is it worth selling it? Yes, it is. Bye bye! Right, so I'm going to give this second Japanese race a go because the limit is the same as the FR1 and midfield's pretty good, so I think I can do it. Lots of yellow cars. Yeah, so I thinking about the next sort of car I want, I'd like to get something that's not Japanese. You know, I want something sort of lightweight and European. Oh, I'm going to have to look up some of the lap times of when I did these earlier races just to see how much these upgrades have improved the car, because it's so much better. I think the next car I buy, I'm just going to stick a couple on straight away because the change is dramatic. Oh, Tommy Kyra is easy too. Oh, too busy admiring it, and I went off. up on the berm out there, that IS-200. Whoa! I think if I was going to carry on with this car, which I probably am not, a limited slip diff would be useful, because now that I've stiffened up the suspension it's very tail happy. Oh, maybe this track is a little bit too open and fast for my lack of power to not be an issue. Oh God, I really cannot drive in a straight line, it just gets slightly off and it's... sort of hit the wall on the exit, giving me a convenient run.
It's funny that the AI make more errors in this than they do in 5 and 6. Don't know whether that was intentional or if it's just bad coding. I don't really want to know, to be honest. Lunge! Oh, look at that. Oh, and that's what you get. Oh, yes, that makes sense. The front of my car gets hit and the back gets spun around more. I will not finish last. Yes, I will. Yes, this car has, unless I've missed anything obvious, this car has done its duty. It serves me proud, but I think it's time to retire it. I'm not going to sell cars that I use unless I'm really struggling for money, because it's nice to keep stuff that's that's done you good. Right, so we're up to about 31 grand, which is about where I was before I put the upgrades on. So I've gained nothing by doing all that, except knowledge. And can you really put a price on knowledge? Let's go... I was going to say bargain hunting then, but this is not BBC One at 12.15. So let's go shopping. Let's come up to the north first, look at some of the northern European cars. Oh, there's so many, so much stuff here that I want to aspire to, but I'm not going to be able to afford any of these because they're quite expensive. Hmm... No, you see that would just be a front-wheel drive alternative if I bought something like that. That's what I have now. I remember when I first got this, I really wanted... To, I, no one's ever wanted to save up for a Vectra. I just thought that that was really cool. Alfa oh, Romeo, see this 155, that's very cheap. But again, it's very similar power and weight to what I'm using now. Get a 156, because I used to own pretty much this entire car in that colour. But again... I will own one of these at some point in the video because they are magnificent. Just remember this, the Celica event. So it would be rude of me not to attempt it. So let's race against some Celicas. No idea if I'll be competitive or not, but I like Trial Mountain. This car handles well now. So unless they are stupidly fast. So you can never tell if that's just them getting away quickly at the start because that's just the way the game likes to do it regardless of the race you're in or because they're genuinely quicker than me. Well, I'm slowly gaining on them so I may have a chance. Oh gee, there's like sleeker GT4s in this race. They'll have a good 100 horsepower more than me anyway. Maybe a bit of a struggle. Oh, look at this. Oh, went for the gap on the outside. Oh, if I'd turned in a little bit earlier, that corner would have been flat out. I don't know, I've always got the chicane coming option as well. Shh, don't tell anyone. Very cheeky. Whoa, what kind of rear wing is that? Is that a, a modified, like a TRD sleeper or something? Oh, look at that. Oh, I couldn't have driven that much nicer. I'm hoping that even without the scale, I'll be quicker than, even without cutting it, I'll be quicker than them through this part of the track. There's a slight cut on there, but yes, look at that. What is it? I remember my best lap time when I did the 80s car cut was a 145, so let's see if I can, if I can better that. There's still a little bit of understeer.
And I'm kind of going to miss racing this. But I will come back to it. Oh, they're all gaining massively. You see, the issue with taking the corner like I did last time, i.e. bouncing off the AI, is that when I come to it the next lap, I don't know what I've got to do when I'm in clean air. Oh, look, here they come again. Very similar to what happened on the last lap. Oh, he's actually got in front of me this time. Oh, yes. Cheat my way through. No, 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 no. That's a massive loss of momentum. Yeah, you stay on the outside. I can still take the victory. There we go. Unless I drastically mess this up, I should be okay. Hooray! And the lap time is a late 43. So yeah, it's gained about a second and a half, and that wasn't the best lap. So probably about two seconds a lap quicker thanks to those upgrades, which is a big difference in games where the AI isn't rubber banded. XVR Detroit show version. I'm guessing that's the sleeker with the crazy rear wing that I mentioned. Right, so winning that sleeker event's given us a little bit more money. No, you see I think I'm gonna have to bite the bullet and accept that I can't quite afford to use a European car at the moment. Oh hang on. Let's go back to Peugeot. I thought that had more power than that. I really thought that had like 210-ish horsepower. If it did, I would have been all over it like a rash. Right, let's have a look in Murica. You can get a lot of power for not much money here. It goes completely against the philosophy of what I was going to try and do. If I can get something slightly weird, you know, I could just go for a challenger like that and win a lot of races, but that's not fun, is it? The Charger, yeah, same thing, see? It's got all the power. Could win some fairly high class races and get money. But I don't want to take the easy route. I see something like that. There'd be no reason to want to have a car with 225 horsepower going through the front wheels that weighs 1600 kilos. Taurus, is that the one that if you race modify it, it becomes a NASCAR, but it's still front wheel drive and has very low power. And you know what, I'm going to go for the Ford Taurus. The reason I'm picking it over the Dodge is because I can race modify it and it will become a NASCAR with completely the wrong specs and it will be funny. Right, so we've got 231 horsepower to work with. I'm not going to do any upgrades at the moment. I just want to get out and see how it goes. Right, that's first things first, FF Challenge to Heaty Road. Let's try and get a, we'll earn a car and it can get a bit of money back and then I can do some upgrades to it. Quite a nice noise. I'm assuming it's a V6 engine because that's that's kind of a V6y noise. Oh, look at that! That's I've forgotten what it's like to be so good off the line. Oh, these long, long gears. Not long ears. It's not a. It's not an animal. Oh, this is nice. I'm guessing when I break it's just going to understeer. Oh, a little bit. Oh, oh wow. I don't want everything to be easy, but after trying to hustle that sleek around, this is a welcome change. Wowzers. Doing like 120 miles an hour and not even out of third gear. Right. Do not understeer into the pit entry. Do not understeer into the pit entry. Nailed it. Gears are super long. Yeah, meant to do that. I've noticed that I look behind me quite a lot. It's just like a reflex action. 
and something that I sort of do in and out of corners. Oh, almost did that incredibly well. Oh, I can feel its weight at times, but it's grippy. Handles quite nicely. And even though I'm a little way below the sort of power limit for this race, it's holding its own quite well. It shouldn't be more fun than that Salika, but it really is. I can actually push without fear of sort of just the body roll just taking it somewhere I didn't want to go. Just got to worry about the weight at the front of the car. Yes, I can see good things for this car. That's another positive thing about using Grand Turismo 2 for this is the vast number of prize cars you get, meaning it's very easy to earn money, so I'm not going to be stuck redoing events to try and save up for something. And for that race, I've won the Mugen Accord, which is fantastic, so I'm going to sell it. Bye bye! Right, let's take this beastly Taurus. Where else can we go? The Four Wheel Drive Challenge! No, that's wrong! Right, let's do a US National Championship race in it at Laguna Seca, because I don't think I've done a, a race on a real racing track yet, so it'll be nice. Oh, look at these opponents as well. None of these are what I'd call truly American. In fact, I think this is the most American car in the race. All these primarily European Fords being classed as American. Oh, Gran Turismo. Oh, focus group. Lift off oversteer, magnificent. This car performs well above my expectations. I was expecting wheel spin and just horrid understeer, dreadful handling, but it's really good. Oh, I don't even care that that was a ridiculous cut and that this gravel has no effect on the speed of the car. corner is not that fast in real life. It's not that easy. I was duped. Later iterations of games with Laguna Seiki come up to that corner and think, oh, this is easy flat, and then you just end up in the wall and dead. And the corkscrew doing a nosedive, which somehow pitches me into a nice line for the corner. Cheaty as hell again. Oh, such a good bit of corner. Any game, any car, you get that right. It's just so satisfying. Where's the undulation change there? It's a really badly modelled version of Laguna Seca, isn't it? Yes. I think I think after this car I will be venturing into the European stuff because I can see myself earning enough without even having to add any upgrades to this. Oh wow, really messed that up. Again, that corner shouldn't be flat that easily. The track's too wide. It's too flat. the apex nicely. Look at this! It's so wide! I don't think you could enter the corkscrew at 60 miles an hour in 
many top line race cars, let alone a bog standard Ford Taurus, and get away with it. Power delivery is silky smooth. Right, we're going to do one more race. We're going to finish the video where we started it, trying to do this bloody global compact car cup race. I do not, I don't mind losing, but being consistently defeated by the same event now starts to it starts to get me on back up a little bit. I know I said that I need to come back when I've got something that handles, that's primary focus is handling over power, so I enter it with this, but, oh look at that, oh, I'm ahead of a car by the start finish line already, so much better, I didn't think it, I knew it would be a better car all round than the Celica, but I didn't think it would just be this, this much better, this is ridiculous, look, in the lead by turn one, in the Celica I was doing one of those ahead at the end of lap one, I know I keep saying it, but it really is. Okay, that corner, I need to brake significantly for that. It's not almost flat as in the Toyota. Whoa! They're lying through that corner all the way out on the outside. Oh dear. Whoa! Oh my god. In the car ahead, you think, oh, they're going way too fast into that corner. And then someone overtakes you, you think, oh my god, they're going even quicker. And then someone's overtaking them, going even quicker. entry to that corner. I know the other car was there to stop me from going out wide, but could not have hit that apex nicer if I tried. Oh, there we go. So assuming I don't... Right, I've got to close off the apex here, otherwise they'll just go through the gap. Yes! Am I actually going to win the race? Yes, I am! Finally. Couldn't win a race because the car didn't handle quite well enough, so I bought an American car and that did the job. Right, I know I said that's going to be the last race of the video, but while I'm on this roll, I'm going to knock out that Rome race as well. prepare myself for the headache of the hatchings on the first corner. Oh, it's worse than I remember. Right, they're just all going to come barreling up the inside here. Oh my goodness. Not only did I not hit anything, but they didn't hit me. This is so much easier to drive. I have a couple of prize cars at the end of this as well. You know, this will have made back my money from buying it in 20 minutes. Oh, 
Oh wow, that's worse than ever. Oh no. Oh, there we go. Oh, but luckily I bounced off the rule. The rule? Bounced off the wall? Rather than going sort of a little bit through the wall and being sprung out into the track. Sans momentum. A little bit worried about a lunge there. But I think I've managed it. Yes. Take that compact car cup. Right, let's have a look at what cars we've won from that. Oh, we've got a Clio and a Yaris, which neither of which I want, but they give me a disproportionately large amount of money. Goodbye. Oh, that one doesn't. Goodbye. If I need them for a, you know, a specific manufacturer model event, then I'll rebuy really them. But look, there we are. We're back up to the money that I had before I bought the full Taurus. Uh, yes, that was surprisingly excellent. Yeah, a V8? That can't be right. I'm sure it must be a V6. 3.4. I'm going to look that up and I'll let you know next time whether I was wrong or whether the game is wrong. Alright, so if you enjoyed that, uh, like and subscribe. See you next time.